Hello guys, Nick here. I recently came back from a trip to the middle of Australia. I'd never been there before and it was full of many, 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 many miles of dust because it was a desert. I was out there filming for a documentary and I was actually filming an off-road rally. And so you had a ton of people and vehicles kicking up an insane amount of dust. I've just about finished coughing the last of it up. So I thought it was about time to make a video to actually talk about how I kept dust away from the camera and outside of the inside of the camera uh, by using a DIY solution to weatherproof, weather seal the camera. Now, if you've ever shot in environments that aren't 100% dry, so you're outside shooting in the snow, the rain, or maybe in some kind of dusty environment, I don't know how you go, but I generally get start to get a little bit stressed there's a little bit of anxiety that comes on every time I know I've got to step into those types of locations. The reason being is that generally the, the lenses I have, like most of the Canon L series, they're pretty well weather sealed. They're designed to take a little bit of a beating. In fact, if you come from a DSLR or even mirrorless uh, camera world, you'll know that a lot of the cameras and the camera bodies are designed to have a little bit of weather sealing so they can take a little bit of a pounding. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, however, I don't know if they would even call it weather sealed. I don't know if it was designed to be weather sealed, but there are a lot of uh, switches and buttons that, that to me were just areas that a, a, a dusty or dirty environment could wrangle its way inside and potentially down the track affect my camera. So I wanted a solution uh, to protect the camera body. I didn't worry too much about the lenses, um, I wasn't worried about uh, microphones or, or any other accessory. My main concern, as cheap as this body can be, was protecting the camera body. So what was my solution? I wonder if I can put my camera inside a sandwich bag and I did just that. So this is how you can use a sandwich bag or a freezer bag to effectively weatherproof your camera. Okay, so obviously the, the most kind of important component to this setup is your bag, your DIY semi-dustproof camera cover. You can get a couple of different variances. Uh, these are, they're just known as sandwich bags or, or freezer bags here in Australia. You might know them as something different. Probably the best type to get would be a Ziploc bag because it has a zip along the seam that is easy to uh, open and close so you can actually get to your camera nice and quickly if you did need to make any adjustments or, or access the camera body pretty quickly and on the fly. I don't mind these types though because they actually have a, a double seam so it, you know as, as long as you're making sure you've got a complete seal from edge to edge you kind of get that extra protection which is which is sometimes sometimes nice. So we want everything in the camera ready to go so uh, any batteries, make sure they're fully charged and inside the camera. If you're recording uh, media internally, cages, uh, anything that you know that you're gonna want to keep within the Ziploc bag uh, or the sandwich bag, get onto your camera now. Every single time you make a hole to fit a wire or a screw or an, an attachment point, because we are gonna have to cut into this, you compromise the effectiveness of the weather seal, right? So if you can have uh, your camera self-contained, media, batteries, you can view the screen okay, all within the bag, then great. You've done the job very, very quickly. You just seal it up and you're good to go. Cool, so once we've got everything in front of us, we can go ahead and actually put the camera inside the freezer bag. We place the camera with the label facing away from us because we don't we don't want it to potentially cover up uh, anything that we need to see so you face it away from us let me place there we go place the camera in the ziploc bag now the toughest thing that we're going to have to attach to the camera is the lens what we need to do is create an incision uh, in the paper bag, that's, that's our first compromise, right, um, to any kind of uh, weather sealing that we get with the, the Ziploc bag or the sandwich bag. 
and we're going to attach the lens. Now, what I actually suggest, making sure your lens and camera bodies are still attached, is making a uh, cross incision, taking care not to damage your lens cover as well if, if you're super precious about that kind of stuff. <laughs> just kidding. Obviously just be as careful as possible. You can do this with scissors as well. It's a little bit easier. And then we have a very botched cross. But essentially, we're going to place our lens through here. And this is going to um, tear and, and expand as much as we need it to, to get it around the lens. So being super careful. You can really leave the, um, the camera body cap on if, uh, if this makes you nervous at all. So now we're ready to attach the lens. Now just be careful that you don't catch any plastic as you're attaching the lens. There we go. So that's how it's looking at the minute. What we need to do is try to weather seal that as best as possible using our trusty gaffer tape. Try and just invert the tabs that have essentially left over from where we made the cross incision. Okay, so showing you up close, you can kind of see whether the the, the, that cross insertion has now left us those those relatively sizable tabs to uh, uh, use as as extra big attachment points. But of course, we we do have some some fairly close elements to the camera body here. So we've just got to make sure that we cover that as best as possible with gaffer tape. Now, word of caution when uh, kind of tidying this up with with gaffer tape on zoom lenses, you've really got to be careful to see knowing which part of the lens is rotating. Now, in this instance, I've got a Canon 24 to 70. It's not just the zoom ring. You can see via the, the lens marking here, you've actually got that extra, you know, half a centimeter or so rotating as well. So I need to make sure that my gaffer tape doesn't encroach on that and in, in impede my ability to quickly rack zoom if I need. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to place all of this gaffer tape just against the camera body itself. I want to bring that out as, as best as possible to get the best seal. Hopefully you can see a nice clear ring of gaffer tape you don't have that much room to to play with the, the gaffer tape itself is probably only a, a centimeter wide if, if not a, a little tad more uh, so you don't have a huge amount of play here and so what I would suggest um, if going out into some seriously dusty conditions do it one more time as safety get it as uh, protected as possible but I feel for today's purposes we, we've done pr pretty well there uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that now we can start to attach the other accessories that, as I said, are going to kind of interact with the camera body. Okay, so the tripod plate is in. Finally, the, the, the other kind of compromising point is going to be your cables. How do they get out of your camera onto the, the, um, the device you need, right? So what you want to do is gather up all the cables you want. Um, and you want to attach them into your camera. It might just be a HDMI or, or SDI cable. It might just be a headphone jack or you've got an external microphone you want to plug in as well. Anything that you know is going to need to go to an external device. Now, would we be running that out of the actual opening of the freezer bag and, and gaffer taping around that? My suggestion is no. Firstly, you might need to actually access other areas of the camera while you're filming. Um, maybe you do need to change your battery, as painful as that might be when, when the um, camera's in the bag. You, you still wanna access the, the actual main 
uh, compartment of the bag itself, right? So what you wanna do is a good suggestion would be to tidy up these cables. And again, finding a relatively uh, common midpoint for where your, your cables are, we're actually gonna put another incision point here to feed the cables out. And this is gonna be a nice small incision. So as large as you need to fit your cables through, Trying to keep that as small as possible because again, the bigger the incision, the easier it will be for the environment to attack your camera. Great, so what do we do with this uh, little hole now? You guessed it, we gaffer tape it. secure here uh, as you can see I probably I probably made the incision a little bit too close uh, for comfort to the actual um, locking part of the bag but that should be okay again it is plastic it does have a tiny bit of give if you need That's what you want to make sure is you can still lock bag. So once you've got your camera in place and, and you're pretty much ready to roll with it, this is pretty much the, the, the setup I had uh, for the documentary I filmed out in the desert and I, I felt pretty comfortable. I mean obviously you could do the same treatment to some of your other accessories if you want to keep them as weatherproof as possible but my main concern was was the camera. I didn't want it to get damaged. It's as cheap as, you know, the, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera can be, you know, it's precious. It's precious to me. I've only got one, so I want to treat it, treat it well. If you didn't know, there are probably a couple of downsides to going the DIY route, obviously. It's not a professional solution, so it's not going to be perfect. It's certainly not waterproof. I mean, even, even camera dust and, and rain covers, not, they don't waterproof your camera unless you put it into a waterproof, completely watertight case for things like underwater shooting, right? So it's not designed to take on a huge amount of weather or elements or spray, but it will at least provide that first layer of protection, especially if, like me, you had some concerns about how weather sealed or how uh, well protected that, that camera body is. Another thing to consider is that as soon as you wrap that camera or whatever accessory you're trying to weatherproof with some kind of plastic bag, you're adding a layer of insulation with the air inside. So just like a, hey hun, what do you call those houses that are really warm because they're all glass? Greenhouse. Thank you. Yeah, so wrapping your camera up in a layer of uh, plastic basically makes it act like a greenhouse. So if you're in a sunny environment like I was in the desert, even in winter, even when it doesn't get that warm, your camera is gonna actually suffer from a lot more heat than if it was out in the environment with no protection at all. Now, in my instance, I didn't actually come across any overheating issues. I didn't see any um, noise creeping into the image or anything like that. It's just a consideration. Um, check your camera, check the temperature every now and then just to make sure uh, it's not hot enough to fry an egg off. But other than that, it does well in a pinch. It's easy to put together and it's cheap at the end of the day. All you need is just a few plastic bags and some gaffer tape. So can't really go wrong. So I know your first question is gonna be, well, how weather sealed is this solution really? How much water or how much environment uh, and atmosphere could it actually take? This clearly isn't designed to replace some of the waterproof and camera protective cases and uh, covers that you can actually get. 
because they are the professional solution for a reason. This is designed in a pinch when you know that you're heading into an environment and you don't have time to prepare or you don't maybe have the budget just like I was. So do you have any DIY camera protective tips or hacks? I'd love to know. Let me know with a comment below. Uh, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will probably catch you in the next video when I'm complaining about how poor a dustproof and weatherproof case a sandwich bag is. Bye.